All right, we were moving over the Twitch API stuff into our main API project. So I need to create a new file. Uh, RS, not TS. Uh, and then in here, pub mod Twitch. Yeah. And then we're going to grab. Yeah. Glad you like it. That was a, a fun little project for. How long did it take me to do? I think not too long, a few hours here and there, back in December, in Blender. Um, and with uh, ChatGPT, Dally 2, to do, like mock up the graphic and then putting it into Blender and turning it into an actual thing that like animates, it was a lot of fun. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this stuff. Yeah, it's 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 funny. Um, I mean, I don't I don't think I'm too skilled with Blender, mainly because um, you know it's something that I pick up. It's like a lot of artistic things. I'll pick up a little bit of uh, for a little bit, to just try stuff stuff out, and then like, yeah, I suppose if I stuck with it, I might eventually get good. <laughs> but I do a little something, and I'm like, put that down, and you know. Uh, I guess it's a thing with a lot of hobbies over the years. I pick up for a little bit and then I put down and do something else and um, don't necessarily stick with it <laughs> long enough to really get good at it. Um, and Blender has been something that I've toyed with, uh, I think basically since it became open source. So we're talking like 20 years when I get into calligraphy. Yeah, calligraphy, calligraphy can be really cool. It's not something that I've necessarily... I wouldn't say I've never been interested in doing it, but it's not been the most interesting thing to me. Or ink brushes, yeah. Like, uh, I have tried a few times to do sketches. I have I have a book somewhere where I, I did, you know, some, some drawing attempts. And uh, eventually I bought, like, a, a, um, a tablet, um, like a drawing tablet. Um, so kind of more doing digital kind of art stuff. But uh, I, I wouldn't say any of it's really that good. <laughs> Currently learning Japanese. Ah, oh, so probably most of my clip review would be Japanese. Yes. Yeah, I, I have been doing Duolingo um, for a, a couple of years now. So very casually trying to uh, pick up more vocabulary. Um, ever since I took, like, the... One of the last times I went to college, it's been a while now, um, I took Japanese 101. Um, but be honest, it's a little, well, I mean, I've I picked up words. Don't ask me uh, any right now. It's, it's not good enough, right? It's not any substitute for actual like conversational practice. In my opinion, as someone who only speaks one language, <laughs> really in in practice but it's maybe better than nothing it's uh you know a few minutes out of the day kind of um something to to do i i feel comfortable in saying it's better than nothing and yeah i saw the reaction to dealing from the native speakers which were hilarious yeah i i've seen some other stuff in in not um, like I've seen videos of people talking about the other language courses, the, the not Japanese, but maybe like, uh, Spanish where they have like AI interactive, like it speaks to you and you speak back and like, it's more conversational. And I think something like that could be really good, but I don't think that's available for Japanese. Um, or it's not available in, 
um, where I'm, I'm at. Enki and uh, Yomatan. I've heard of Enki because that's like a, um, a flashcard um, uh, thing that it's based on. I forget the term, but it's like the, the idea where you it reinforces over time, like it gives you repeats of the same thing. Space repetition. Yes, that's the one. I tried to use Enki to teach myself uh, Lojban long ago. Uh, but I didn't keep that up, and I, unfortunately, I lost my um, uh, my red book for Lojban. I don't know if this is something you've heard of, but it's a it's a artificial uh, constructed language from uh, it's been around a while. Nope, haven't heard of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a thing. All right, we probably need to make these public. All right, we are, I'm probably gonna wrap up here in a half hour or so, because it looks like food is gonna be on its way. Um, but uh, between now and then, let's see how far we can get. Maybe we can get all this done by then. Access token is private. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and fix all the clippy warnings? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Furiago referencing uh, a, a Lojban word. Something about a clock. It's the, the one word that we know. What is this access token? These probably all need to be public. Yeah, I I mean, there are definitely warnings. I was looking at one, and I couldn't really make sense of what it was warning about. So we can, we can see what we can do about it. Where is this access token that it's complaining about? Oh, there it is. Uh, I mean, I think Rust is something that has definitely been around for a while now, but there's new stuff coming to it. I think the errors are currently hiding a bunch of the warnings that would pop up. Okay, we shall see. Oh, that's just co-pilot thinking. Okay, but this is good, I think. Oh, I still want that file open. Uh, not quite sure. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, okay, so... I think that means we're done with the Twitch API. Goodbye, Twitch API. And that leaves YouTube Upload API. Uh, I could also run Cargo Clippy All Targets Workspace. Uh, yeah, I'll put that here. And we'll come back to that here in a minute. We have one left. So, uh, request. Oh, this one has a feature that the others don't have. Let's add that. Uh, if you don't tell Rust Analyzer to do so, it doesn't run Clippy by default. Interesting. Well, it's not doing anything right now. <laughs> Oops. Didn't like that. That might be out of date. Okay, cool. Reload it. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, let's see. Analyzer, restart server. Uh, 
Oh yeah, hovering over it. Yes, that does that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I knew that at one point. I was kind of expecting clicking on it would open this, but yeah, you're right, hovering over it is the thing to do. All right, is there anything else in here that we don't have elsewhere? Looks like no. So now we're just gonna gotta bring um mm, I see. Okay. So we're gonna have to make some changes to App State. Uh, let's do this. We're gonna do render storage path, which is different than rendered episode storage path, maybe. Hmm. Okay. No, definitely not because this is okay. So this is duplicative. We'll just use this one from now on. And then I think I need two redirect URLs here. I need one for Twitch, one for YouTube. So these are like the, uh, the OAuth redirects that redirect back to this application. And those need to be different. All right. All right, and you can use the same and do the proper challenge where you pass a value with it. Uh, oh yeah, so like have the same redirect and then, yeah, I could do that. I think I have a uh, item on the backlog. Oops, there's already say YouTube. Um, uh, item on the backlog to kind of refactor how I'm doing all a lot. Maybe actually using a crate that does that and, and that sort of thing. So that would probably be kind of in that same vein. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So being able to look at the value coming back from that call and it would disambiguate. Is it from YouTube or is it, is it from Twitch? Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Um, I'm right now trying to limit the scope of things I'm changing <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm making a kind of a very big, broad change and reorganizing things. And I don't want to, I, I don't want to try to make improvements outside of that until this is all sorted out. Um, Try not to break too much. Yeah, no, no, I think it's a good idea. Um, I think that would probably be simpler, maybe. It would be, yeah, I think I, think I like that idea. Um, let's actually make a note of that in the project. How about I search OAuth? There. Yes. That, that is kind of what I was thinking here, but let's call that out too. See if we can use an existing. All good things. Okay, so what? Is different here, this part? Yes. Okay. 
So this should be YouTube redirect URL. YouTube. <laughs> Twitch. Yay, copilot. Yeah, no, I, I feel like I, I went and looked and I was like, uh, I don't want to figure this out right now. I have a thing that works for my specific use case and I don't want to bother doing anything else. Uh, yeah, definitely. YouTube. 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 Your tube. Where do you see your tube? <laughs> Nowhere? Yes. Your tub. <laughs> Alright, what am I missing? Uh, secrets new. Definitely missing. this okay looks good so I think that's all of the state things that we need let's get rid of the th uh, let's grab the routes yay more routes should be all under YouTube We don't need any of that. We do need all of this code. Copy all of that. And that's going to go into. Oh, look, errors. <laughs> Twitch RS errors. Things I've missed. Uh, I'll come back to that. YouTube.rs. Close that file. All right, so some issues. Uh, let's see, crate. Don't need that. Uh, I don't have a URL. That seems odd. Oh, there we go. That was missing. Okay, we don't need that. We don't need that. Getting really close. Hmm. There we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, render storage path is actually like episode rendered episode storage path. Uh, should be something about redirect. There we go. 
should be YouTube. Oh, right, right. So the, the error in the twitch.rs is because they changed the redirect URL to be service specific. One error? Ah, same thing. All right. In the long run, I would probably just make an app config, which contains a Twitch config and a YouTube config. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the the, the reason it's like this is just because I'm just trying to make the minimal set of changes to bring everything together. Um, but yes, this should be cleaned up. Put the app config in app state. Yes. Someday. Okay. So these all need to be public. Got some repetition here as well with, uh, hey, look, it's another access token struct. But if we find a, a, a crate for OAuth, that'll probably take care of a lot of this. Um, I think that is supposed to be internal, and so is that one. Okay. What are we missing here? Okay, let's try that command. Aha. Uh -huh. Beautiful. No field redirect URL. <laughs> And then these are existing warnings because I have a problem in my macro that I created to uh, handle some of the logic for the list views. Oh, this should be YouTube token URL. No. No. What's the problem? Oh, it should be like this. Yes. You would enable Rust Analyzer to use Clippy. Um, it's probably easier than reading this. Yes, probably. <laughs> How do we do that? Which, which config? Yeah, that config, okay. Check commands. Clippy? Like that, you think? Okay, let's uh let's give it a shot. So reload workspace. Or do I need to restart server? 
Yeah, let's restart server. Oh, well, too late. I did it anyway. <laughs> oh, hey, look, we got warnings. This import is redundant. Beautiful. Well, now I have 18. <laughs> 21. Spoke too soon. Oh, yeah. It doesn't need to be uh, a reference. Uh, yeah, so this, these are the ones that I saw before, right? So these fields are never read, it says. But they clearly are. So body is a detect input. And we're reading track. Say this is shot. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Actually, let me do this. So uh, let's delete the remaining API. Goodbye. Um, close down everything. Now we still got to update Nginx, Docker Compose, all of those things. But in terms of like the code movement, look, it almost fit, it's almost not a scrollable thing. Uh, let's let's commit this. Uh, consolidate into an. API service. Bam. All right. Would it complain? Oh, that's nice. Good for it. Can I just do this? Four fixes there. Well, that that's that's a good thing. I just you know am cautious about. <laughs> Like I, I, you know, I want to be able to see what's changing. Allow Jerry. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's going to be able to fix my macro, but that's fine. The serialized duration is never used. All right, just just some changes. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that return isn't necessary. Um, is that? Okay. Okay. So it's got some like some good like little cleanup things going on here. Not just you know the trivial. This could just be uh, entries instead of entries colon entries. All right, so. If I reload workspace, do I still have 56 warnings? Yeah, dollar $create is always where the macro is defined and not the crate you executed in. Okay. So we're down to 14 now. So just ignore macros.rs. So we have a bunch of these warnings here. And this function is not used, apparently. Really? Oh, it is. So uh, this function is used. Like that. Hmm. But still, I mean, I think this this looks like a good cleanup. Uh, I don't have a derived to serialize, so it's actually not. Uh, oh, you know what? You're right. You are absolutely right. And and one on on the one hand, obviously, it's not a problem. That. Uh, 
that's actually very clever that it can it can check that um and it's obviously not a problem that we don't have deserialized it's not it hasn't come up but uh there yeah it checks the generated code how fancy um apply clippy all right and we're down to 13 warnings so that that's a good improvement um, we have more to do here in terms of um, actually hooking everything you know together but my food is almost here so we're uh, we're gonna wrap up things here and uh, let's go kick off a raid really quick 